Falcon 9's in startup. Dragon is in countdown. Have you ever dreamed about soaring to the stars? From the emu-trodden red dirt of the Australian outback, Charlie Jones dreams of reaching the star-studded emu in the sky. An amazing team of visionaries from the Royal Australian Air Force, the University of Western Sydney, the US Air Force Academy and NASA are working together to make Jali's dream come true in real life. What? I'm gonna be famous. Let's meet a local member of Jali's squad who can brief us on the mission. Hi Kirsten. I built a special kind of camera called a neuromorphic camera with a team at the Western Sydney University which will be sent to space to look for a very special kind of lightning called sprites. These are a type of lightning that doesn't go down to the ground, but rather goes up towards space. When the US Air Force Academy heard about Jali and her dream to get to space, they suggested we laser cut Jali's picture onto the camera so that she can make it to space too. Can you explain how the technology is modeled on a dragonfly's eye? When a dragonfly catches a mosquito, it targets where the mosquito is about to be, rather than where the position it actually is when it sees the mosquito. In this way, it can kind of predict the future. And this is what we are looking to do with our neuromorphic sensors. Tell us about Jali's journey to space. What tests will the camera have to pass and why? Just like in the movies, being launched from Earth is a pretty violent process. And the sensors and cameras will get shaken around a lot. Because of this, the US Air Force Academy will test the sensors to make sure that they won't melt, break or shatter into pieces and that they will survive the journey and still work once they arrive in space. If the cameras don't pass the tests, they won't be sent to space and Jali's mission will fail. What will happen when the camera reaches the International Space Station? When the spacecraft ducks at the International Space Station, a huge robotic arm will take the payload and attach it to the outside of the International Space Station. We'll then have a very tense wait to see if our camera and Jali have survived the journey and if they'll work. I've got everything crossed that it will. Thanks, Greg. Now joining us from the USA, we have Captain Dale Chang. Captain Chang, where are you? We are in the vibration facility at NASA Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas. Can you talk us through what a vibration facility is? So this facility has many shaker tables or vibration tables that will simulate the launch environments as H7 goes to space. What it does is it measures the shaking at each of the points that it's located at and it tells us if we're going to be successful when we launch or not. Why do you go through the shaking process? If Falcon Neuro survives this intense shaking, we will know then that it's ready for launch, that it's ready to go on top of the rocket, and it gives us all confidence, NASA, Space Force, and the Air Force Academy, that Jolly will survive the rocket launch to space. I can see they've just put some kind of cover over Jolly. Can you tell me why that is? So space is a very, very cold environment, and it's very hard to keep things warm. And so one way that you can help keep things warm is by using blankets and heaters. Kind of like jumping into an icy pond. When you get out, you're gonna want heaters and blankets to keep you as warm as possible. So we're doing the same thing for SCPH7 and Falcon Neuro to survive the intense cold in space. Thanks for speaking to us, Captain. You're heading for the stars. Sounds like Jolly has an exciting and dangerous journey ahead of her. Seconds. I've just received word that Jali is on board. That means that Jali and Falcon Neuro have passed all their tests and have been declared fit for launch by NASA. Let's hope they're right. Godspeed, Jali. Five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Jali has lift off. Next up, International Space Station. In order for the mission to be a success, Falcon Neuro needs to transmit us data from space. I've just had word that the cameras have been turned on after docking. Falcon Neuro, you copy? Falcon Neuro. Falcon Neuro, you copy? And we've just been joined by Defence Space Commander Air Vice Marshal Kath Roberts. Air Vice Marshal Roberts, what's going on? 
Hey Kirsten, we can confirm that Falcon Neuro has just relayed information through to headquarters in Florida. Jali and the Neuromorphic Sensor have succeeded in their mission. That is excellent news. I can see Chief Defence Scientist Professor Tanya Monroe has just commenced her broadcast. Let's see what she has to say. This is a very proud moment for Australia's presence in space. It's the first of many voyages to space for young Australians like Charlie. We call space the ultimate high ground because we can see so much of Earth from our satellites and sensors, just like the one Charlie is on. Advanced sensors in space are the future. They are essential for learning more about our atmosphere and could help us manage things like climate change. It sounds like a big win for science today. Kath, can you tell us what this journey means to you as Commander of Defence Space Command? Well, when I was a kid, I watched Neil Armstrong take humankind's first steps on the moon and my dreams of a career in space were ignited. No matter where we are in the world, we all look up at the stars with a sense of wonder. This wonder inspires a curiosity that when combined with hard work and determination, will see humanity achieving extraordinary things. Australia's space future is bright and there's never been a better time for young people to be interested in space. And there you have it, Australia. You've just seen some history in the making. This is Wiradjuri astrophysicist Kirsten Banks signing off and wishing Jali the best of luck with the rest of her mission.